If you're a newcomer to the Criterion Collection, it can be difficult to decide on what film to purchase next, because the entire Criterion Collection spans over 1,000 movies. So in this video, I'm going to be running down some of my essential Criterion Collection titles, or the ones that I think fit any beginner perfectly. So stick around to get some recommendations. Hello, my name's Elliot, and this channel is all about collecting Blu-rays. So the Criterion Collection, as I mentioned, is very large in its scope. There are tons of movies in this collection, and this ranges classic world cinema, classic Hollywood cinema, some more popular mainstream films, and some films that have particular niche cult followings. And it can be difficult to work out what to buy next when you go into the store or when you're online shopping and you see all of these titles you may not know which one to go for next and that's what i'm going to try and help you with in this video so let's begin the first of the 10 titles that i'm going to recommend for any beginner or anyone who just wants to expand their collection is the grand budapest hotel this is by a filmmaker called wes anderson and if you're not familiar with him, his filmmaking style is very particular. He has such a quirky, a quaint, a very uh, sweet style in terms of his films often being referred to as being like confectionery, being like sweets or ice cream. They're just very easy to watch, very comfortable to watch. And that's why I'm a fan of his films in particular. You may already be acquainted with some of his movies, such as I Love Dogs, Fantastic Mr. Fox, or The Royal Tenenbaums. So if you've seen those, you know he has a very particular style. And that's why I think this is a great gateway in getting further into the Criterion Collection. What you'll find is that many of the filmmakers that inspired Wes Anderson are also present in the Criterion Collection. So once you know that you like Wes Anderson and you want to find more films like his or films that inspired his films then they are probably inside the Criterion Collection. One thing that the Criterion Collection is known for is providing the best edition of a movie and that's in terms of the supplemental special features that can be found on the disc and if you compare the Grand Budapest Hotel to previous versions of the film then you will see that this is the best version so that's why i would recommend this to anyone looking at getting into the criterion collection or expanding their collection further another criterion movie that i would recommend is punch drunk love this is from paul thomas anderson or he's commonly referred to as pta on the internet you may well have seen one of his other films there will be blood Boogie Nights or Magnolia, just to name a few, these often get referred to as some of the greatest movies of the last 20 years or so. But Punch Trunk Love is one that maybe flies under the radar a bit compared to his other works. It's one of those movies that stars Adam Sandler in a particularly serious role, not his typical comedy kind of performance. And it's a film about love and romance and conquering one's emotions, dealing with anger, and just finding a connection to someone in the world. So it's a very different film for Paul Thomas Anderson, and it's a very different one for Adam Sandler. So that's why I would recommend it to anyone, because you're probably already familiar with Adam Sandler. You may well be familiar with Paul Thomas Anderson. Again, it's another example of great special features on the disc, and it's a movie that you can return to again and again. There is a very interesting fan theory about Superman and this film being related to Superman. I won't say any more on that, but this is a film that you can really sink your teeth into. One of the things that is so great about the Criterion Collection is that it provides context on the history of cinema from all around the world. And this next film is particularly an important piece in a specific film movement and this is Breathless. This is from Jean-Luc Godard. Many people ask me how to get into French cinema or how to get into the French New Wave and often this film comes into conversation. The French New Wave was a movement in the 60s that revolutionised filmmaking and went on to affect 
the whole film industry around the globe. That's because they would take the usual conventions of filmmaking and they would flip those on their head and come up with totally new ways of making films. So this is a very important piece in terms of world cinema and the supplemental special features provide so much context about why this is important. So that is why I would recommend Breathless from Jean-Luc Godard. The film I'm going to talk about now will be no surprise to anyone who has been on this channel before. The film is Barry Lyndon from Stanley Kubrick. Now I've talked about this film many a time on this channel. I often say that it is my favourite film of all time. What I will say is that you may well already be familiar with Stanley Kubrick. He is one of the most famous filmmakers of all time, making such films as The Shining, A Clockwork Orange and 2001 A Space Odyssey, just to name a few. Barry Lyndon is certainly a more lesser known film compared to those ones that I just mentioned, but that does not mean it's of lower quality at all. In fact, on the contrary, I think this is his greatest film for many reasons, such as the brilliant cinematography that was mostly shot with natural lighting. So every shot looks like a classical painting and it's just beautiful to watch. I love the choice of classical music in this film and just the story that shows a character going from rags to riches and the effect that that has on one's personality and morality. It's just a great story and this is a great addition from Criterion. So I would recommend anyone who's looking to get more into the Criterion collection to check out Barry Lyndon. A question that I commonly get asked by my friends is where to start with older movies. And what they mean by older movies is movies in black and white, basically, or movies made pre-70s. And this is a big deal for a lot of people because they haven't previously been exposed to these older classic movies. And that is why I want to recommend this one from the Criterion Collection. It is Some Like It Hot. This is a film from Billy Wilder. You may not have heard of Some Like It Hot, but I can guarantee that your parents or your grandparents have heard of this, and they probably really love it as well. The film is just one of those great comedies from the 50s. It definitely doesn't feel old and it's so fresh in its vibrancy and the energy of this movie. The premise is brilliant as well. It's these two guys who witness this crime event and then they have to try and escape town because they fear for their own lives. The only way they can get out of town is by joining this band. But it so happens that this band is all female. So what do they do? They dress up as women, they join this band, but of course the comedic crux of this movie is that they both end up falling in love with one of the women in this band. And it just so happens that the person they fall in love with is played by Marilyn Monroe, who is a name that I'm sure you've heard of but you may not have seen her perform on the screen before. If you're someone who has a particular stigma about watching older movies, watching black and white movies, then I say to you, watch this and I'm pretty sure you will laugh throughout this movie because it is hilarious, so brilliantly structured and the comedic directing from Billy Wilder is just 10 out of 10. So that's why I would recommend Some Like It's Hot on the Criterion Collection. We now move into more serious waters and in fact this next movie may be one of the most serious and most horrifying movies that I have seen over the last few years. It is Come and See. This is from 1985. This is a war movie but I say it's horrifying because it truly does show some very horrifying things in this movie. It is a Russian film made during the mid 80s by filmmaker Elem Klimov. And I can guarantee you probably haven't heard of this one if you don't already know the Criterion Collection very well. But nevertheless, I would urge anyone to give this a go because it truly is one of the most moving, most powerful movies that you will ever see. And I guarantee that. 
And this just shows why the Criterion Collection is so brilliant, because this film was very hard to see in good quality for a very long time. And they have presented this new restoration to us with a wealth of special features on the disc. So if you're just new to the Criterion Collection, this is a great one to get acquainted with how good the level of brilliance from the Criterion Collection is. Now, sometimes we need movies just to chill out to and to relax. We can't be watching films like Come and See all the time. Otherwise, our souls would be hollow and we would just be living in despair all the time. So that's why this film exists. It's Dazed and Confused from Richard Linklater. This movie has such a cult following because it is such an easy film to watch. Honestly, not a lot happens. It's just people chilling out. They're getting by, having fun, getting to know each other. And it's set on the last day of school that's broken up for summer. And just all the antics that all of these kids get up to. And I love this one. You can just put it on at any point and just have a great time with it. The reason I think this is such a great Criterion edition is because it shows off the special care and love that goes into their packaging. Because just look at this. This looks so nice. It comes out like this and then you can fold it out. There's lots of stuff inside as well. And it's just a very nice edition. Tons of special features on there. So if you're new to the Criterion Collection, this is such an easygoing movie. Speaking of easygoing, this one can be quite a very easygoing watch, but it can also be challenging depending on how you look at it. It's that multi-layered. The film is Eight and a Half from Federico Fellini. Now, this film is quoted as one of the greatest Italian films of all time. Federico Fellini had such a unique eye for cinema and for storytelling. And this film is quoted on so many film studies and film theory courses around the world. So you may already have heard of this movie. If you haven't, it's about a filmmaker who has creative block. He doesn't know where to go next. He's struggling for ideas. And he's balancing this with his personal relationships in life. And he's also looking back to his childhood history and reminiscing about characters and things that were going on around him at the time. It's a brilliant look at life, a brilliant look at filmmaking. And I think this is just one that you want to own and watch if you're a fan of Criterion, because it's always talked about and it's always brought up in conversations about movies. It is worth pointing out as well that later this month there is a Federico Fellini box set coming out from Criterion that does include eight and a half, but that box set is quite expensive because you get a lot of films in that collection. So if you're new to Federico Fellini and new to the Criterion collection, I would advise starting with just one of his films first and then working out whether you would want to buy that bigger box set that is coming out very soon. An aspect of filmmaking that gets talked about a lot is cinematography, but a lot of people aren't too clear on what cinematography is exactly. Some people think it's just making a picture look very nice, but it's much more than that. It's about framing, it's about lighting, mood, colour, all of that. Well, this next film and the filmmakers that are behind it are perfect examples of great cinematographers and a great director as well. This is The Tree of Life. This is from Terence Malick. The reason that I think this is a great one for beginners to the Criterion Collection is that Terence Malick is a filmmaker with a very unique style, quite an experimental style in terms of storytelling. It's very visual-led. People often refer to this as a visual poetry because the visuals are what is telling the story. It's not necessarily the script or the dialogue by the characters in the movie. I mention cinematography because The Tree of Life and Terence Malick's movies in general are beautiful to look at. They really are stunning. And this one in particular was shot by a filmmaker called Emmanuel Lubetsky. He's a cinematographer who has done many big films such as Birdman, which won the Academy Award a few years ago. And he did The Revenant as well. And if you've seen those films, you know how visually stunning they are. So 
This movie is a mastercraft in visual storytelling. This edition is also an example of Criterion going above and beyond because it includes an extended version of the Tree of Life that you couldn't see anywhere before. So this is why this is a perfect edition of the Tree of Life. And lastly, I'll bring it back to classic cinema. And this is some classic British cinema because I am from England and I can't not mention these filmmakers when I do this kind of video. The film is A Matter of Life and Death. This is from Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. I always quote this film to people when they want an old film that isn't in black and white because something about the films of Powell and Pressburger is they commonly are shot in this beautiful technicolour so the colours are so vibrant. They worked with this very famous cinematographer called Jack Cardiff and he was like a wizard with the Technicolor technology. So all of the films shot by Jack Cardiff look so stunning, so beautiful, and A Matter of Life and Death is no different. The story as well is such a charming and beautifully touching one. It's about this fighter pilot who crashes his plane in this horrific burning mess, and he somehow survives. He then goes on to find the love of his life, but he's confronted by an angel from heaven who says to him that his survival from the plane crash was actually a mistake and that he should have died. And the rest of the film is about the fighter pilot trying to convince the people in heaven that he should have survived and that he should go on living. So it's just a wonderful story. This is such brilliant storytelling, brilliant visuals as well. So if you're a beginner to the Criterion Collection, and you want to see beautiful Technicolor in particular, A Matter of Life and Death is essential. So there you have it. That's 10 titles for anyone wanting to begin their Criterion Collection or just build it further. I think these are all solid movies to have. They're some of my favourite movies of all time, so I hope you can take these as recommendation. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, my Fellini fanatics, for helping keeping this channel going. And I now have a producer for this channel. So my producer is Paul Bolzer. So thank you so much, Paul. I'll include Paul's Twitter handle on the screen right now. So go and check out Paul's Twitter. He's been a great help for this channel so far. So thank you so much, Paul. And thank you to all of my other Patreon supporters. If you want to check out my Patreon, you can go to patreon.com forward slash boutique blu-rays for exclusive videos and to join our private film loving community if you want to stick around on the channel you can check out other criterion collection videos from me just click one of the videos that's going to be recommended on screen right now because i'm sure you can get some great recommendations in those i'll be back very soon but until then stay well and keep watching great criterion movies